Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to go over what is a dual pressure control and how does it work. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. Today we're going to be going over what is a dual pressure control and how does it work. Before we begin, just a heads up, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week, and let's get straight into it. A dual pressure control can be used for either operating or protecting commercial refrigeration or air conditioning systems. The reason it gets the name dual, as in two, is because there is a high pressure and a low pressure control interconnected into one, and this operates as a simple switch. In the event of a system operating on high pressure, the switch will open and thus stop the flow of electricity to protect your equipment. And in the event of a system operating on low pressure, this control will open the circuit, preventing the flow of electricity to protect your equipment. Let's take a better look at our dual pressure control. Here is our high pressure control, and here is our low pressure control encased in one enclosure. Underneath, you're going to notice that we have two capillary tubes. On the bottom of the control, we have a ring at a larger diameter and one with a smaller diameter. The one with the smaller diameter is directly underneath your high pressure control. So this capillary tube will get connected to the high side of your system. Here we have a larger diameter and is directly underneath our low pressure control. So if you follow that capillary tubing, that will get connected to the low side of your system. Here is the opposite end of our two capillary tubes and you can see we have two flare nuts and that is how it's gonna get connected to your system. If we pay close attention, we have three black bars. One here, one here, and one here. These can be adjusted. The way you're gonna adjust this pressure control is gonna be determined by the type of refrigerant you are using. If we look at the top of the control, we're gonna notice we have three adjustment screws. One, two, and three. And these are going to adjust the black tabs that I just pointed out. Each screw adjusts the tab it is directly above. Right here is gonna be our first adjustment. Here is our tab, and it's gonna be adjusted by this screw. As you can see, it is directly above. Then we have a tab here, it will get adjusted with this adjustment screw and then for this one gets adjusted here on the high pressure side there is just one black bar one tab and you choose at which pressure do you want your system to cut out at the low pressure control is slightly different the low pressure control has two adjustments let's take off our faceplate to get a closer look That's our control and let's zoom in. All right, let's start with the left side. As you can see, it says high pressure cutout. So this is our high pressure control. Here is our tab and we have a range from 150 to 450 and we just adjust our tab to the pressure we want our system to shut down at if it ever reaches those pressures. This side here is our low pressure control. And I stated that this one is a bit different because we have two tabs here. So we have two adjustment settings. This type of control closes on pressure rise. So what does that mean? That means it opens on pressure drop. So that means if the pressure gets to the limit where you set this at, let's say right now it is set to 50, then the system will open on pressure drop and then it will close once the pressure rises back up. The reason I said 50 is because this control right now is set to shut off at 50 PSI, and I'll explain that. If we look at this tab, this is our differential. If we look at this tab, this is our high event. Let's get a clear image of that. Differential, high event. Here it states switch low event is high event, minus differential. Sounds confusing, but it's really not. When you first learn about something, of course it can be difficult, but with a little bit of patience and time, you can achieve anything. So let's go over this. So what is our low event? Our low event is the pressure we want our system to cut off at. 
Right now, it is set to 50. I'll explain that, but let's go over what this means. So it says, low event is high event minus differential. So the low pressure this control will be set at is going to be the difference between your high event and your differential, right? High event minus differential. So let's see what this is set at. So our high event is 60 and our differential is 10. That means our low event is 50. So at 50 pounds of pressure, this control will open our circuit and stop everything to protect it. But what is our high event? 60. So when the system shuts down, it's probably going to equalize in pressure. And when it equalizes, right, the system's pressure will rise. Once it rises back up to 60, it's going to come back on again. But if it happens to fall at 50, it's going to open again. If we look here, we have a knockout where we can bring in our electrical wires. And here we have two conductors. A dual pressure control operates with the principles of a switch. And as you can see, we have two conductors. You also will come across some with four conductors. Depending on the model, you will find a single pole, single throw switch or a double pole, single throw switch. I drew out a diagram to give you a better understanding. Here is one side of power, and here is the other side of power. Here is our HPS, our high pressure switch. Here is our low pressure switch. And here is our compressor contact, a coil. This represents a coil. This is a switch. So, as we know, this is enclosed in one control, the high pressure and the low pressure. So the contactor coil is what's going to energize our compressor or our components, typically the compressor and your condenser fan motor. Once this is energized, everything is running. Keep in mind that the coil is completely isolated from line voltage in a contactor. I did make a video on what is a contactor and how does it work, as well as how to troubleshoot one. Please go check those videos out. A link will be in the description and you will see a pop-up. So, let's say this whole line has electricity and this coil is energized. If we have an event where we have a high pressure situation, this switch will open, thus stopping the flow of electricity to our contact or coil and shut down our equipment. Same thing for the low pressure switch, except if we have a low pressure situation, this switch will open and stop the power going to our coil so we cannot complete our circuit and shut our equipment down. Pressure controls operate with the principle same as a switch and they are NC, which stands for normally closed. Now we know what a dual pressure control is, and now we know how it works. Tomorrow, I'm actually gonna be installing this exact control on a refrigeration system, so stay tuned for that. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.